Every Christian college that I know of offers what they call spring break campaigns. Uh, I'm most familiar with Abilene Christian, uh, where I spent most of my time, uh, and they, they have spring break campaigns every year. Um, and I, you know, try to encourage Jackson to, to do that. He's doing one with uh, his RA that's going to be in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, he hopes to, within the next year or two, go on an international one with the health sciences school uh, down there. Uh, but I went on one one year when I was an undergraduate student uh, for a particular reason. Uh, there was this really cute girl <laughs> that was going on this campaign. And this campaign was going to St. Louis. I'm like, okay, St. Louis, there we go. Yeah. Uh, and, but, but she was the reason that I wanted to go. Really cute girl. And so I went on this campaign. And we worked with kids who are in juvenile uh, detention center. We worked with some inner city people. Uh, we did a lot of outreach with the church there. Get to meet some of the, the local ministry and, and missionaries. Um, it was a, an amazing experience that I had. And what's funny is right now there. I could not even come close to coming up with the name of this girl. <laughs> to be honest, I can barely remember what she looks like. Uh, and I certainly can't come up with her name. And she was initially the reason that I wanted to go on this campaign. That's what I went for. But I ended up getting so much more than what I went for. The things that I do remember, the things that I was exposed to, uh, really impacted my life uh, from that point on. And I'm really grateful for that. So how about you? What did you come here for today? Which What'd you come to church for? It's a good question. I think it's a fair question. Maybe a lot of us would say, I came to worship God. That's it. That's the right answer, right? That's why we're all here. Why did I really come to church? Maybe some of you would say, I came here to be edified. That's a good biblical word, right? This is the only, this is the only building you use that word in, I bet. And that's what I'm here for. In fact, Paul uses that as one of the correct motives for coming to church. Edification and worship are two biggies, right? Why else? Why else might you be here? Maybe it's the singing. Or the classes for your kids. Or because other churches that are closer to your house don't have the Lord's Supper every Sunday, and this church does, so I come here. Or maybe it's the fellowship time. You get to touch base with people. At snack time, I really like that snack time. I mean, I enjoy that. You know, that's, that's one of the reasons I come here. Are those okay reasons? How about this? I go to church out of habit. It's a good habit, kind of like taking your vitamins or, or brushing your teeth. Been doing it for a long time, and this is what you're supposed to do. It's Sunday morning, you're supposed to go to church, and that's what I do. That's why I'm here. How about I go to church because it's a long-term investment in my family, in my marriage. Church people are a support system for me. My kids get to spend some time with some other quality adults. It's, it's good for them. It's good for me. 
I need to be around positive role models myself for, for marriage. And so I've got these people here at this church that have been married a long time. They're good husbands and good wives. And so I come here. You know, I get to rub shoulders with them. I get to learn from them, spend some time with them. It's a good investment for my family. Or how about this? I go to church to meet quality people. Better people at church than at the bocce ball club or the book club or the dance club. I'm just, that's the kind of character I'm looking for. People I want to be around. People I can trust. And wouldn't church fit the bill for that, if that's what I'm looking for? Or maybe I'm trying to relive an old experience. I go to church because one time when I was a freshman in college, I was 19 years old, and they had this amazing worship experience. And I just remember feeling so close to God when that happened, and I'm looking for that again. I want that. Are those motives okay? I go to church because it keeps peace in my marriage. My family. My spouse will give me grief if I don't go, and so I go to keep the nagging at bay. Or how about this? I go to church because I am in real estate, and church is a place where I can help some people who might be looking for a house. I'm there. I can help them. And by helping them, they help me. It's a win-win. People need realtors, and I need to make a living. Or how about this? I go to church because I'm trying to find a husband. I'm trying to find a wife. I heard the preacher Dave found his wife at church in Seattle, and so I'm going to give it a shot. Amen. People in the bars, it's not what I'm looking for. I'm not going to find anything I can trust long term there. So just to let you know, I will be uh, sharing a donut with Miss Cutie Pie at the snack time there. Because you know, that's what I'm here for. Are those good reasons to go to church? Why? What would you come to church for? How about this as an answer? Acts 3. One day. Peter and John are going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. And when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. And Peter looked straight at him, as did John. And then Peter said, look at us. And so the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. And then Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. And then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. And when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. This man, who is physically disabled, he went to church for some money. Right? That's what he went for. Church is a place where I can get some cash. It's a place where people have a little more motivation to be merciful. Uh, What do you come to, to church for, sir? I come for cash. He went there with motives beneath the acceptable motives for going to church. He's not there for worship and edification. He went for cash. But man, he got so much more. Something he never dreamed of. 
there is a lot of unanticipated activity in this story. Uh, what happens isn't what usually happens on your way to church Sunday morning, right? For the lame man, he came to church to get some cash. He instead got healed. He hadn't counted on that happening. He wasn't expecting that. Peter and John are going to church to pray. And when they got there, they performed a miracle. Hadn't expected to do that. The religious authorities experienced some unanticipated activity, too, if you keep reading the story. They might have thought that Jesus' power and influence had kind of just gone away. I mean, they think he's been crucified and gone. He's done. And then something they didn't expect. These recently uh, scattered and fearful disciples are suddenly acting very empowered and very vocal in, their, in the words that they share and in the activity that they're willing to do in public. Even the crowd got something that they weren't expecting. It's not every day that you go to church and you expect to see a guy, a crippled guy. Oh, that's the crippled guy, you know, that's always here at church asking for money. And all, all of a sudden he's walking around and leaping and praising God. You don't, don't, didn't expect to see that. But kind of back to our theme. Don't you know of people who've gone to church for mixed reasons? my hunch is you've probably looked at them in the mirror a time or two, like I have. Got in trouble with the law? Feeling a little guilty? Come to church, feel better. Try to get some absolution. I was working really late one night. Uh, it's probably a couple of years after I got here. I was sitting in the office back here, typing up some notes, and... Uh, it's dark. I mean, it's, it's, it's probably 11 at night. And all of a sudden, on the window in my office, you know, don't, didn't expect that. And there is this traumatized looking teenager staring in the window into my office, like, open the door. And he had gotten caught parking with a girl by the police and he was terrified to go home because they had called his house. Where do you go when you get caught by the police for parking? You go to church. <laughs> Try to find somebody who will be merciful to you. Lost a loved one, looking for some support, a shoulder you can cry on. Come to church. Your drinking's getting you into trouble, so you come to church, hoping that might help. Or your finances are out of control. Maybe I can go to church. Maybe, maybe God can help me out with this. You're divorced, kids in tow, and you need some support. Or you're just lonely. You just need some friends. Out of habit, or the emotionally, or, or socially, or financially crippled, they just kind of limp in to church. And truth be told, probably like this lame man, most people like that don't really expect too much. The divorced mom would be thrilled to simply find a mature, reliable babysitter that she can make use of. If I can get that, man, I'll sit through any Bible class any Sunday. The two or three handshakes a lonely single man might get during meet and greet might be more positive contact than he gets all the rest of his week. And so it's worth it for me to come just for that. What's Luke saying in his story here? What, what does he want us 
to see. Maybe the spotlight is on you and me. One way we could look at this would be to put ourselves in the shoes of this lame man. Luke's, Luke, he uses a lot of attention getting words uh, for this guy. He leaps, he stands up, he walks, he enters, he praises. And with all these sort of descriptive and kinetic words that he uses for this guy, maybe Luke's putting the focus on him and maybe on us in his shoes. And so maybe the question is, Dave, how happy are you are about being spiritually healed? And then again, Peter seems to be getting a lot of attention. He's doing the miracle. At least that's what the religious authorities think when they find out what happens. Is Luke wanting us to see that, that gr- the great things that God can do through an uneducated fisherman? Is that what Luke wants us to see? Or maybe we should identify with the crowd, all the action words that, that they get in this story. They saw, they take note, they're filled with amazement. Maybe we should look at them. When Peter gets the attention of the crowd and later the religious authorities, he tells us who the story's focus is. Listen to what he says. He says, in the name of of Jesus, he says to the cripple. And later on in the verses that we we didn't read, by the power of Jesus, he explains to the crowd, in the name of Jesus, he tells the religious leaders this miracle took place. And my hunch is that as many times as we've read, you know, this story, it's not unusual to think that we haven't really thought of Jesus being the focal point of this story. Because it's easy to get caught up with the the reaction of the crowd or with Peter or with the response of this crippled man, you know, how his life changes so much. And we miss the passive wording that Luke uses when he says uh, his feet and ankles were healed. But Peter, clarify, or Peter clarifies things for us. Because three times he says, Jesus, Jesus did it, Jesus did it, Jesus did it. So suppose it happens. Suppose you get what you came here for. You want to better behave kids, and that's what you get. You get a better marriage, and that's what you came here for. You're looking for a better feeling, and that's what you get. Looking for more customers, better friends, maybe like the lame man, just looking for some cash. And you know what? You can even get cash at church. People will help you. But what God is after, more, more than a big shoulder to lean on or a pocket full of potential customers or or a room full of good influence. What God is after is deeper than that. What God is after is what is done to this man by the power of and in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus isn't necessarily a good sounding phrase in our culture it gets misused by football coaches. It gets misused by televangelists. But in the name of Jesus is Luke's, it's one of his phrases, and he uses it with intention. He uses in the name of Jesus at really critical points in this story that he tells all through Acts. In chapter 2, at baptism, people receive forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus. In chapter 8, the Samaritans receive forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus. When Cornelius and his family are baptized, they receive forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus. Later, when, when Paul's in Ephesus, the Ephesians receive forgiveness in the name of Jesus. And the lame man's greatest needs are met in the name of Jesus. 
I've seen a girl who was a stripper, who was involved in the X-rated film industry in the Northwest. Cut off and shunned by some, accepted by others because of what they thought they might be able to get from her sexually. And I've seen that same girl come to church not expecting too much. Not looking for cash, she's just coming hoping to not be embarrassed. Embarrassed. And then see her receive so much more. To receive love, to receive forgiveness, to, to receive hope and a future in the name of Jesus. What do you come to church for? Most of us probably come for reasons somewhere in between the biblically correct ones to looking for new customers. We're somewhere in there. We come looking for something. Relationship. Maybe we come out of habit. We're here because we're hungry for a good feeling. We're hungry for, for a spiritual moment or experience. And we also come to church Struggling with the realities. We know how imperfect our lives are. We come with some guilt. We come with some pride. We come with some bitterness, some, some short fuses, sometimes holding on to other people's failures that we're still upset with. We come with all of that. And then we might hear somebody say, And then he took the cup and gave thanks. And he offered it to them and he said, drink it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Or we hear somebody read, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And maybe somebody leads us in a prayer to say, Father, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. And we come to church to have the significant opportunity in the name of Jesus to forgive and to be forgiven. To not just find some friends, but to find life. The lame man went to church for some cash and man, he got so much more. And so whatever your motive for being here, whatever your understanding, my hope is that God will take you in the name of Jesus as he did with all the characters that we've just read about. And give you so much more than what you're looking for. Something that is a far deeper need than maybe you can imagine. Something that is beyond your ability to even describe. And may all of us get what we need by the power of and in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's pray. God, uh, we have, we're a room full of people with mixed motives for being here. And truth be told, some of them are more noble than others, some of them less. Help us to want what you want to give us. Jesus, thank you for being patient with us, for loving us, for wanting to give us a hope and a future. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. We're going to stand and sing. If we could pray for you about anything, please let us do that. Okay? Let's all sing.